today's video, we're going to go over some creepy TikToks. Let's get into it. The story is this kid in college was walking and he was just like a normal kid. And this like jock guy started to like, and then he pushed him like super hard and he like hit his head. Oh no. And then like woke up. He's like, oh my gosh, that hurt so bad. And then just went on to class and stuff, goes into class and he sees this really beautiful lady, girl, basically was pursuing her and she like had a bunch of bad relationships or whatever. Finally, a couple months later, they ended up dating. Long story short, they got married, super in love. They had kids. He had a job. All this is great, right? He said that like every night he would go into his kids' rooms and like, oh. like read him a story, all this stuff, you know? And then one night after leaving the kids' room, he was looking at this lamp in his living room and he's like, there's something wrong with that lamp. Oh. And he kept on staring. Every day he would come and stare at it. And then it got, it got so consuming to him that he like was missing work. He was neglecting the kids, his wife. He would just sit in the living room and just stare at this lamp. His whole marriage fell apart because he was obsessed with this lamp. And his wife left him with the kids. Oh, no. no and <laughs> then he finally one day was like went over to this lamp and he's like, this lamp's not real. And all of a sudden the lamp started to glow. <gasps> and then all of a sudden he like got super cold and it like turned into like a portal sucked him through and he woke up on the concrete on the concrete in front of the college no. he lived 10 years no in this reality this false reality because oh he gosh. got knocked unconscious he just like suffered with depression yeah. he's like because yeah, his wife and kids don't yeah. exist oh my gosh and so but he said every night he would have a dream of his five-year-old son and like would have conversations with them, but wow. he, those people didn't exist. Well, that's just depressing. I hope that this was just a made up story and no one actually had to go through that because that would just be sad. Have any of you guys heard of something like this before happening or have you even experienced it yourself? Because that would be something pretty interesting to know about. That 289 pound rock is called the mystery rock. Some think there's a footprint in it, this impression of latex was used to try to see if, in fact, it really is a footprint. You've got the heel and what looks like a big toe. But scientists will tell you the sandstone is 100 to 200 million years old, so it couldn't be. So we sprayed a little water on it, trying to get a better look and the impression. And we look at it from the front, a little bit from the side. I'm not 100% sure. Evolution says absolutely not. So is this a human footprint? To me... That looks like a rock with a footprint in it. I can see even the pinky toe has got a little indent there, but I could be wrong. What do you guys think? We are absolutely screwed. Nah. What the f- So videos like this have been emerging over the last day, showing huge, huge blackouts over the whole of the US, but it is way worse than that. So, on the 22nd of February, yesterday, millions and millions of US citizens woke up to some very weird sights. Essentially, millions of phones completely cutting out. There were huge power outages, meaning people didn't have power and lights in various places in the US. But as I say, phone signals were completely cut out, showing a message just saying SOS at the top of the phone. Meaning people were going into quite a large amount of panic because it wouldn't even let people dial 911 or emergency numbers. That was mainly reported saying that it was AT&T and T-Mobile which were greatly affected. But there are stats which have come out showing that most of the phone providers were down in some capacity. And even huge drops in things like TikTok and YouTube because basically power was down in so many areas in a subtle way. Meaning that millions and millions of people weren't even able to go on their phones. Now, why has this happened and what's going on? Well, apparently there was a solar storm in the middle of the night on the 21st which could of course this, which is a little bit scary because The Simpsons predicted a solar storm for this year. Well, so many people did. Essentially what this would do is cause power outages and mean, you know, signals go down, which could be possible for what's happened here. Or people are saying this could be something scary, such as, you know, everything that's happening in the world right now. Hacks, cybersecurity threats, I don't know. But yeah, let me know in the comments down below if you were affected and hit that follow button and I'll keep you updated. This personally did not affect me or my wife. Uh, but my wife did know some people that were having troubles with their phone due to this situation. I'm not sure if it was just a complete outage in different areas or what exactly. I don't necessarily believe that it was a cyber attack, but it could have been. But the, the solar flares, to me, makes more sense to cause this disturbance. What do you guys think? Firstly, why would anybody put doors so high up like that? And the construction doesn't even look that old. It does not look like it was made 
and medieval times or anything like that. Those doors look pretty modern. And another thing, what happened to the rest of that building or that structure? Now, could this be a Tartarian structure of some kind? And this is just something left over of what used to be? Now, again, these are my crazy theories. And these videos are for entertainment purposes only. But do feel free and let me know what you think. Man, at moments like this is when I would want to use the drone to go in the building if it's not like restricted access. I'm curious as to what that is. Do I think it's like Tartaria stuff? Not necessarily. It probably has something to do with drain off passage or something of the sort. But I really would be curious because I have not a clue. If any of you guys know what that is, please leave a comment down below letting me know because I would like to know. This man has an incredible talent. He can produce significant amounts of water just with his mouth. His ability is unique. Whenever he wishes, he can produce enough water to water flour, wash his hair, clean his face and hands, fill bottles with drinking water, and even wash motorcycle wheel. Many people accuse him of storing water in his mouth before spitting it out. However, he has proven that he's not cheating. He actually uses his throat as if it were a water pump. Incredible. I think I'll pass, but that's a cool trick if you can do it. I, I bet the water is extremely warm. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you see this graph here, you'll see that 13% of the viewers that watch these videos are actually subscribed, while a whopping 80% plus are not subscribed to this channel but keep coming back to see the videos. This creepy video is going viral right now. And it was posted by Reddit user Accomplished Row 900. I'll tag her below. And she begins to film the interior of a house at night she's trying to sell, and it does not go well. Now she's had more than one paranormal experience here. This is the first one she caught on camera. It should be noted that she hasn't told the owner or the potential buyer in fear that it will make it harder to sell. But this comes off as authentic to me. But what do you think? It's 10 p.m. and my day was fully booked with showings of this vintage 1963 bungalow. Go ahead, do it again. You're on camera. Open this door. Go ahead, open this door. Open this door like you the other one. Come on, just move a glass or something. Go ahead, do it again. I'm not scared. She went from realtor to ghost hunter really fast.
I mean, honestly, that was very brave of her. I would have probably freaked me out. I've had situations kind of happen like this a little bit. That door right there normally stays open because it's got a little faulty latch and that thing will pop open and it'll send chills down my spine, even though I know that the latch is kind of faulty. And it's just like she handled that pretty well. Funny enough, this probably will help sell this house. <laughs> There's going to be some people out there that are interested in that. Why did they destroy all the bells after World War II? Because if you sit in a bell and someone hits it and it begins to resonate, you can begin to heal like that. Because sound frequency instantaneously heals the body. Similar to chanting. If you om, any sound effect will begin to instantly structure all the body at the same time. That's what used to happen in the cathedrals. They would ring the bells or they would play the pipe organs and all of the cells in the body would instantaneously become structured, which would instantly heal them. But they had to get rid of the pipe organs, which are made from lead, which is interesting. And they had to get rid of the bells because both of those can heal people. Now imagine if a bell of the size was ringing in a cathedral. Now imagine the frequency that would come out of the cathedral into the town. You could heal the entire town instantaneously just by ringing the bell in the cathedral. That's why they had to get rid of them. They had to break all those bells. All the bells you ever look up. Just type in like bell in whatever country or city you're in and notice how all the bells have a crack in them and they're broken. I wonder why that is. And people would say, oh, it's a conspiracy and it's just made up. No, no, there's intention. There's intention to get rid of these things so that we're dependent on a sick care system. This is a pretty interesting theory because... I do know a lot of churches that have no bells anymore that once did. There is a few select churches that still do ring a bell, but not nearly as many. And it's like, why not? If it's something that you can hear from a great distance, it, it's just a really nice sound in my opinion. So why would they take that away? Leave a comment on what your guys' thoughts are because that would be interesting to know about. What if you found out we are living inside the cell of another being? I've often thought about this for a long time, even when I was a kid. I always wondered, what if we are just a cell that is living within God's body? What if God didn't just create the universe, but he is the universe and we are a part of him in internally? I really find this a really interesting theory. What are your thoughts on this? Because I'm sure there's people that definitely are against it. Or maybe it's a theory that you've never even thought of. I'd be interested to hear what you have to say about this. When your mouth is shut and you're just alone by yourself, what's happening in your brain? Are you seeing pictures? Like when I say cat, do you see a cat? Don't ask me what type of cat. I'm just saying when I say cat, do you see a cat? Or do you see the word cat? When your mouth is shut and you're just thinking, is there an internal dialogue? Is it you talking? Is it Morgan Freeman talking? Because I've heard that some people have nothing. I'm not talking about anxiety. I'm Well, maybe I am. But it's not. I just, I'm saying, I don't have voices like that. I'm just saying that when the world is quiet, it's just me. They're talking, talking, talking. There is an internal dialogue at all times, okay? And I have delayed processing. So when you say something, it takes me a moment for me to, okay, got it. I just, what? I, there's some people that when their mouth is shut, their brain is also quiet. Huh? That makes no sense to me. And then there's some people where their brain is shut and they can just imagine a fucking whole world up here. Huh? Your brain's immaculate and I just, I don't get it because when I, when the world is quiet and my mouth is shut, the world is not quiet. The world in my brain, they're constantly like dip -a -dip -a -dip -a, all the things that I need to do, different things I'm thinking about, things I'm wondering about. It's an internal dialogue at constant 24 seven speed, whoo, going. But some people have pictures or some people, blessed by the grace of God, have fucking nothing. Just mute. Beyonce style. They have nothing going on. How do you live your life? I constantly have something going on in my brain of just like, boop, 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 boop. I think it's internal dialogue. I think it's my voice. I don't really know. But I'm just, it's not like that with the voices, okay? I'm just, you, you know what I'm talking about. There's some people who see pictures. There's some people who have motion pictures going on in their brain. They don't have any dialogue. Just do, 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 do. or it's a mixture of the two of pictures and dialogue. Whoa. What's going on in your brain? Please let me know. This is so interesting to me. In my brain, I've already gone over this in a previous video, I can see very clearly images, even with my eyes open. I can see solid objects. 
and I can hear myself think very loudly, multiple different voices, multiple different types of voices. Like I have a fairly active brain, I think, but she, she said something that brought something to my attention for the people that cannot think or imagine. And I don't mean that in any offensive way. Um, do you suffer any types of anxiety or depression? I know I have had some people in the comments say that they don't have any internal monologue or things like that. So this mainly is going out to those individuals. I'm asking that question for those individuals. Do you experience anxiety? Do you experience fear? Do you experience depression? Because I really would like to know. For me, I'm afraid of heights. The reason why I'm afraid of heights, at least as far as I can tell, is because when I look over the ledge, there's a voice in my head that says that is really high up and I can hurt myself if I fall. And if it wasn't for that voice, would I feel that way, you know? So I'm curious to anybody that just can't hear themselves think or see things in their head. How do you experience anxiety, depression, fear, things like that? Or if you do at all. And y'all see something cool right here? All right, look, check this out. These ancient structures. Now I want y'all to tell me why y'all think this looks like some kind of mechanism you know it almost looks like it's got gears and it's turning doesn't it hmm i got another one i want to show y'all too i like this one right here watch this one all right watch how he turns it now and people will say oh it's a in case they had earthquakes they could check and see you know to make sure the building was still square and stuff come on man it's, there's a lot more to that there's got to be allegedly what if i told y'all that allegedly those moving gears from those columns can have something to do with these right here. The Vimanas, the flying vehicles of the past. Hold up, hold up. I know it sounds crazy. Look, look right here. Here's a column on, on an old building, right? This is a modern day shaft. We'll call it identical. Jet engine. Look up here. Modern, ancient, ancient. So the ring on the first pillar has eight sides. The ring on the second pillar has 16 sides. The third ring has 32 sides and the fourth has 64 sides. These are not rings, but are gears. Well, this gear ratio right here, I mean, like, what's really going on here? You know, is what this person's saying. Voltage regulator. Vimana flying chariot in ancient India. Y'all think about these things, man. There's a lot that uh, allegedly is possible. I really find these very interesting because I have also thought about certain things that they were utilized for in the past. I do not know how old those buildings are for sure. I, I have no clue on that. But I always wondered, because they spin, they are like gears. What if these buildings were used to charge aircrafts? For example, a very sophisticated aircraft can land on the buildings and it hits the right gear mechanisms and rotates the whole building's system. And doing so charges the spacecraft or the interdimensional craft or whatever the craft is. That's how it charges is by spinning all of these gears, creating some kind of energy to recharge the ship. I also think that's the case for like the pyramids, but the pyramids are a little different in design. I think that they could have been wireless chargers for ships to either hover over or land on completely covering the pyramids so that they could charge their crafts. I know that's super far-fetched, but hey, I'm just throwing my mind out here. <laughs> Has anybody ever heard that silly conspiracy theory about that Mars, the pictures that we see, are actually just Devon Island, which is in Canada, with a little bit of Photoshop? Let's just see if we can figure this out, everybody. Allegedly, this is Columbia Hills, Mars. They're clicking auto-tone in Photoshop. Looks identical, the landscape does. I don't know, I just, I didn't make these. Allegedly, here's Mars on the bottom. Up top, you know, a little color adjustment. And then boom, they, they're saying it's Mars. I don't know if this is true or not. It's just what I'm, you know, being told. So I decided to type in Devon Island, Mars, you know, just on maps, just to, you know, entertain myself, I guess. Cause I got a little bit bored. Let's see what we got here. It's one little area, you pull up the street view. Oh, that's a NASA? What? Halt and Mars project? That's supposed to be the one that's on Mars. Hey, pretty cool stuff, man. In all means, I don't like to back up NASA. But there's a couple of things that I would like to at least bring up, because I'm not 100% positive. 
but I'm pretty certain that Devon Island is where they test out equipment that goes to Mars because the area is the most similar to what Mars's atmosphere is like. At least that's what I've read online. I'm not 100% sure. I also do not know if those are real Mars photos that he's comparing. I don't think they are. I think they're they're pulled from Devon Island and people have just orange toned them and said that these are photos from Mars and they're not real. I, I'm pretty sure. Again, I don't like backing up NASA, but I do not find these to be a real set of photos to compare Mars to Earth with. And with that being said, when he panned over to the NASA truck, I really liked that little Vitruvian astronaut that they had on the side of it. I thought that was a really clever pull to Leonardo DiCaprio's Leonardo DiCaprio. I thought that was a really interesting pull of Leonardo da Vinci's Vitruvian man. I, I think that was pretty neat. Am I tripping or is that a UFO? Bro, what the fuck is that? Yo, that's a fucking UFO, bro. I'm not tripping. Yo, hold on, bro. It makes no fucking sense. That's in the sky. Those are planets or some shit? No way. That's a UFO, bro. That's a fucking UFO, bro. Live in effect, bro. Right in front of me. Yo. That's a huge one. That's the shit you see in movies, bro. What the fuck? I'm out here at 1 a.m. These niggas kidnapping somebody. Yo, that's crazy. This one was pretty convincing. I did a little bit of research because I was curious, you know, what's in the surrounding area. The, 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 object, the object that he's looking at was very stationary, so it led me to believe that it was not a UFO because there was no movement whatsoever from it other than the movement that this individual was doing. So I looked up what is in Minneapolis. It turns out that there's a casino in this area called Mystic Lake. And apparently they have a lot of lights that show up into the sky like this above their casino. I'll, I'll put up some reference photos just so you can see. So I'm pretty sure that's what this is. If you haven't heard the news about this yet, there was literally a satellite crashing into Earth today and we finally just got an update. So the 5,000 pound satellite crashes through the atmosphere today between Alaska and Hawaii. They think that it's in the water. If you want a little visual for what this satellite looks like, it's right here. It's pretty massive. So the satellite made an uncontrolled return to Earth on Wednesday, which is today, re-entering the atmosphere over the North Pacific Ocean between Alaska and Hawaii. So far, they believe that all the debris is in the ocean because we haven't gotten any reports of anything massive happening. For example, it crashed again on someone's house. They're saying that it crashed through the atmosphere at around 5.17 p.m. UTC, and the agency was unable to predict exactly when and where the satellite would re-enter because its return was natural. Basically, this satellite was released back in the 1990s, but it's been inactive for a very long time, and ever since 2011, they used the last bit of fuel it had to point itself at us. They done that so the last bit of fuel would actually get it back to Earth instead of becoming space junk. The space agency has not yet said how many pieces of the satellite survived the return, but noted that pieces would be spread out somewhat randomly over a ground track on average hundreds of kilometers long and a few tens of kilometers wide. I do these roundups every day, so add me and come back to me tomorrow. A long time ago, by a long time ago, I'll say about 10 years ago, when I was working construction, I had these conversations with a lot of my work pals that one day, all of the satellites that we have up into the sky are going to start malfunctioning. They're going to start hitting low orbit. They're going to start falling down out of the sky. And everyone was like, oh, no, you're crazy. You're crazy. As of 2024, I'm pretty sure we have over 5,000 different satellites up into the Earth's orbit. And eventually they are going to malfunction. Eventually they're going to fall. And it's kind of scary because they almost have no control as to where they can go when they start going. So eventually it's going to start raining satellites. Maybe not, but it is looking like it's happening more and more as time progresses. So I have a feeling we're going to have a lot of down satellites before much longer, especially if solar flares are starting to knock out their control systems and things like that. And they have no control up in space on how they act. I just
just solved hieroglyphics. See, hieroglyphics is usually depicted with a bunch of animals. So I got this little wall hanging thing from Amazon and it's got hieroglyphs and symbolism and a bunch of animals. Well, I also have the Egyptian Book of the Dead, which has nothing to do with being dead. It's actually called the Book of Going Forth by Day. And there's obviously a bunch of hieroglyphs in there. And they're written in such a way that it looks like some sort of formula, but we just don't have the legend until now. This is a book of alchemy from the Renaissance. Um, and it's quite interesting because it has these curious illustrations of chemical instruments compared to animals. And so we have here a mattress that looks like an ostrich, uh, but there's also uh, a fluff that looks like a store toys or a bear. Um, and there's even a dragon-like creature yeah. with seven heads. Sure, this book was published in 1608, and it's the first edition of De La Porta's influential treatise on distillation. And this is a work that teaches how to extract the essence from natural objects, including amber and scorpions, through a series of chemical and alchemical. Hey, I find this creator fairly interesting. She always brings up really interesting things, like the last couple of videos ago that I had of her, she had this medallion that she's going to put on her wrist because she feels like the Anunnaki were using it for better health and not just like telekinesis. So who's to say? She might be actually onto something here. Something is going on with the AT&T phone network as we speak. This is a heat map from downdetector.com that shows several major U.S. cities without any AT&T cell service. That also includes myself. Now, this was updated just a couple minutes ago that already shows 8,000 plus people that have the ability to report the outage. And everyone also immediately taking to Twitter to say, what is going on? And the short answer is, we have no idea what's going on. I mean, it's currently four in the morning here, Eastern time, and I'm on SOS as well. The only reason I'm able to upload this TikTok is because of a Wi-Fi connection. Now, some of the largest impacted cities include these up above, including Houston, Dallas, Seattle, Los Angeles, Chicago, San Antonio, San Francisco, Tulsa, and Atlanta. Now, 59% of people say their mobile phone isn't working. 25% say there's no signal. Question is, are you getting service right now? And is this only on the AT&T network or is it on other cellular brands too? So I'm pretty much done with these videos. I just find it extremely interesting that people are so interested in this because I, I don't know maybe it's just because we use our phones all the time and we're just so dependent on it I, i'm not sure but if the phone service was down for a week plus i'd understand that is a huge catastrophe and it is a catastrophe to not have your phone during the day as well because they are important like you need to have phones if you have kids so you can keep up with your children while they're at schools or you can keep up with your spouses just to, in general to be connected to people Phones are important for that reason, but it was only down for not even a day. So right now I'm breathing out. I'm coming up out of this, and if I get stuck, I have this rock with me such that I can pop off some of these Knuckles, which made it very hard to get into. I'm going to be shirtless shortly here. Ah! A lot of people ask why we do this. And uh, you're just never going to get a sufficient answer. Why do you wake up in the morning? You know, what drives you? What makes you want to get up and go study a subject or go to work or go out and hang out with your friends? It's really nothing, right? This is life. And that's all. This is our way of living. Ah! It is not our way of dying. It is our way of destroying shirts, but our bodies are just fine. Just a quick disclaimer, this individual is still living. Even though the captions say that the footage of this caver's last moments, that's definitely not true. This individual still makes content to this day. And with that, I, I would say props to the people that go cave diving, the people that do cave mapping. That's what he does. This individual maps caves for the states, and I find it extremely interesting. It's really thrilling. It's 
highly anxiety inducing. So, so viewers beware if you go and check out this individual's channel because he gets into some tight situations. I can't believe I'm saying this, but phones are now banned in the UK. Honestly, just leave the UK. Leave. I'm, I'm warning you. I'm so I'm sure you all know who this guy right here is. Now he's been making some pretty drastic changes to the UK system over the last few months. Now if you guys are in school, I feel terrible for you and you can say goodbye to your school holidays and a lot of these are gonna affect you. First of all, the main one that if you still don't know about, I'm gonna tell you. He wants to completely scrap A-levels, meaning you have to stay in education until you're 18 and you have to study maths and English till you're 18. What? Before, obviously, you could pick what you want to do after your GCSEs, go to college, go and work, pick your subjects. Nope, not anymore. You're going to have to stay in school and have to study maths and English. Then he came out with a bombshell a few weeks ago saying that he wants to essentially cut down school holidays, if not scrap them, meaning that kids will get maybe three or four weeks in the summer. Three or four weeks? What? The big one which came out last night is the phones. So Rishi Sunak has now announced that phones will be completely banned in schools nationwide. Now, of course, there has been pretty strict regulations on phones in school, but it's kind of down to each individual school what they pick. Not anymore. That's all changing. So you will most likely now have to hand your phone in at the beginning of the day, every single day. And he also wants teachers and people at school to actually have the right to be able to take the phone off you if you do have it on you for a large amount of time. Yeah, I don't know. But let me know your thoughts on this in the comments down below. If you're in school, I feel terrible for you. Hit that follow button and as always, I will keep you update i mean i don't live in the uk i do wish a couple of things i wish that my school would have made us learn math and english way more than what our school systems do here in america because as you guys have watched plenty of my videos you can tell my english is awful it is garbage but i do not agree with teachers taking students phones as soon as they get into the class i think that's a little ridiculous and could be handled in a much different way. There needs to be a system to where the teacher can have their eyes on everybody that has a phone. Phones should be presented in front of the students so that the teachers can see everyone's phones. And if they don't see the phone, then they can automatically assume that the student is using said phone. If I needed to contact my kid, if it's an emergency, if I'm going to pick them up, I do not want to have to contact the school to get a hold of the teacher. That's way too many steps for an emergency situation. I would just like to be able to call my kid and say, hey, I'm coming to pick you up, be ready. And, or if it's not an emergency and I just need to send them a text message letting them know, hey, I'm gonna be late from picking you up at school, things like that. I, that's the whole purpose for a child to have a phone while they're going to school is to be in closer connection with their parents. By taking the phones away, you're really taking the parents' connection away from their kids. If we're talking about kids in that sense. Now, if we're talking about college, then it's a little different. They probably aren't relying on their parents very much or their parents relying on getting a hold of their children very much. So it could be handled way differently. But taking phones away as soon as you get into class is a little absurd to me. What's your opinion on the situation? Because I just don't feel that that's the right move. Okay, so tonight is that night. I said I was going to go out here. And see if I can see this face thing that everybody's been seeing. So this is not an app just to make sure y'all understand what I'm doing. I'm straight video broadcasting, stuff like that. You see it? Look. Is it still there? Look, there's a face. Hold it, hold it. Oh, my camera, my camera, my camera. There it is. Yep. Look. Yep. I gotta sit still. It's, it's cold out here. The nose and everything. That's huge. That's huge. There it is. God, oh, oh, hold up. Again. Hold up. Let's let's make sure I can get this. Stupid phone is acting up again. I gotta get a better quality. Hold up. There it is. There it is. Massive. It's turning. It's huge. It's turning. That's turning. Let me. That's turning. There it is. There it is, people. The face. Hold up, let's go inside. I gotta get a better view because that light, oh, the light is distorting. The light is distorting it. Oh, God. I can't see nothing coming out here. The porch. All right. I can't see my steps. All right, there's the cars. All right. There it is. Hold up. There it is. All right. Zoom in. That's it. That's it. It's, it's bigger than the last night. Look at it. Look at it. 
Should we should, call somebody? She should call somebody. Hold up. Go inside and call somebody. Go inside and call somebody. Dang. Go inside and call somebody. It's not again. People ain't going to believe this. There it is again. Stupid tablet. There it is again. Let me, let me zoom in on it. I need to stop moving. Let me just zoom in slower. There we go. It looks so grainy. It looks so grainy. I'm trying to stay still, people. It just looks so grainy. I need a 4K camera or something. Same time. Whoa, shoot, you scared me. This is scaring me. You scaring me. Look at that. You see it? You see that? It's big. Look, look at it. It's looking right down at us. You see how it's looking at us? Yeah. God's looking at us. I can't see. Here, go, go, uh, turn on the garage light. Turn on the garage light. Oh, gosh. Is the garage door locked? Yeah. I'm tripping. I don't want to be out here too much longer looking at this. I don't even want to speak loud. Honestly, I want this to be a real video, but I have my doubts. It it looks so fake, but the reactions and everything seem so genuine. I, I don't know. Maybe if this individual gets a 4K camera, a tripod, because this video was two days ago. Uh, I'm hoping that maybe we can see a little bit more of this because I've seen this once before. Uh, last year at, in December and I was curious about it then but this is a new video and it looks different than it did back in that time frame so I'm very curious about this leave a comment on what your guys' thoughts is this fake is this real have you seen anything like this because if this is real I don't think I'd be able to stop looking at it I'm definitely going to lock eyes with that thing all right guys I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here if you are interested in any of these videos that I played today, check in the description down below. There's a link to each video we watched today. And with that being said, have a good day.